Hi, my name is Janice Agarwal. I'm a physical therapist here in the United States. Um, and today we're going to talk about therapeutic interventions for our young children with Project Willie syndrome. The early years of our children are the most critical in the development. Um, they are rapidly developing their motor skills, their language skills, their self-help skills, their critical thinking. Um, so what we want to do in this small video is take those developmental skills and inform you what they are and how you can best help your child to develop in the most effective way so that we can look at the long term so our children can be more normal in their environment. All children develop in a very sequential pattern of motor skills. Our children, because of their hypotonicity, will develop those same sequences but at their own timelines. So we're going, to we're going to focus on the developmental skills themselves and not on the timelines. And with those skills, we are going to help you come up with a plan, a strategy, so that you can help your child develop um, to be the most normal possible. We're going to start with head control. Head control is the most important skill our children are going to learn. When our children are developing, they start in utero. And in utero, most parents feel their children moving, but our children didn't move. Our children, most parents say they never felt anything at all. And at that time, they're developing their inner ear of balance. They're learning their own movements and feelings, and our children didn't have that. So as soon as they come out, we have to help them develop those exact same skills. So we're gonna start in head control. And we're going to start in two different patterns of head control. Um, while we're working on head control, in a parallel world, we're going to be working on balance. We're going to be working on helping our children to um, be able to keep their alignment, be able to protect their heads in case they fall, and get their equilibrium so that they feel secure as they come more upright. Our children are so hypotonic that oftentimes it's very difficult for them to move, but we have to understand how we develop in order to help our children. As we move their heads up, the muscles start to develop all the way down their spines. And that's an important thing to know because one of the problems a lot of our children have will be scoliosis in their future. Scoliosis takes the spinal cord and what happens is the muscles on one side will develop a lot stronger than the other and that vertebrae starts to pull over and therefore we have scoliosis. So at this stage of development, we have an opportunity to work on a balanced spinal cord, balanced shoulders and a balanced pelvic so we can try to um, not get the scoliosis in their future. Um, so as we're working on head control, the children are not going to like it. And most people tell you don't put your children on their bellies. But I say you have to. You have to because that is how they're going to get their control of their shoulders. That is how we're going to slowly work. As they bring their heads up, they start building all those muscles going down. And they start pushing their weight down to their pelvic area, their hip muscles. And then slowly we work on bringing them up to crawling. This is a really important stage. And the reason is because when we're here, what happens is we start seeing visual. We start seeing that a toy is just several inches or it's several feet apart. We start learning to shift our weight and start feeling for those toys. And so we start learning the distances. We start learning textures. We start learning that if we fall, we can roll. We can start controlling our body. Those are really important things that we don't think about learning, but we learn when we're on our bellies. The other thing we learn, which is a really important thing, is most of our children have respiratory breathing issues. Well, the way your rib cage develops, it develops when you're on your belly and the rib cage slowly starts to descend towards the pelvis. It's on this position that we get the back and those muscles on the side down so that our kids have a better respiratory. That's very important as we move up into the higher developed skills so that our kids have the capacity to run, to jump, to play baseball, soccer, to do all the things all the other kids are doing. 
So this is a really important section. So what I like to do is I can either put a pillow here or we can use our trusty leg. And what we can do is we take our hand and we give our child as much support as they absolutely need and we have fun things around for them to play with. So Sam here, right now, I'm giving him a lot of support in his shoulder area and I'm actually putting quite a bit of pressure on him because that support is security. We want him to feel secure in, in his head so that he can just work on the small amount of muscles that he needs to work on. As Sam gets stronger and as Sam is capable of doing more here, I am gonna slowly move my hand down until I get to the point where I'm just at his pelvis and he can start interacting here. When he gets to the point where he's at his pelvis, usually what will happen is you will find that that child is playing by themselves here, all by themselves, because they have learned that they have enough trunk stability so that they can actually use this to stabilize themselves so they can interact with their environment. That's on our belly. Our second way is quite a fun way. It's actually on their back. This is such an intimate position to have with your child. Um, in this position, we learn eye contact. Children learn from imitating. They learn from imitating our face, they learn to smile, they learn to laugh from us as parents. So we wanna have a lot of contact here. I love this position because here I can also work on massaging them. I can just have fun with my child. I wanna interact with my child. This is a great little thing that we've been given and we want to start developing that unique bond that can only be developed by touching our children. So we can massage them here, we can do different things, but we can also remember that children learn by bringing things to their mouth. So we often see children bring their hands to their mouth, they bring toys to the mouth. Again, we learn textures, we learn how to move our mouth. Many of our children are gonna have oral motor issues. So they, once they start bringing things to their mouth, they're gonna start using their tongue, they're gonna to open it, and they're gonna start getting control here. They're gonna start developing their neck and their belly and their abdominal when they bring their hands to the mouth. When they bring their feet to the mouth, we start developing this pelvic area here. And what happens is the whole core of their body, once on their bellies and now on their back, we're developing that really nice strength in a balanced situation. We're allowing them to explore their environment. We're developing a really nice personal relationship. And we're giving the child security that it's okay to explore and move around. Now in our parallel universe where we're working on balance, this is also a really fun thing to do. Initially, it might be a little frightening for your child, but that's okay. We're gonna learn how to roll our children side to side, okay? And that's kind of an important thing. First off, the rolling in the head is gonna help with their balance, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun, and, and the children will start loving it. I always say, don't do anything once that you don't wanna do a thousand times. Because once you start doing this and they start enjoying it, you're gonna find that your child loves to be rolled around and that is gonna help their balance in their head. It's gonna help their trunk stabilize to control their body as they're moving and you're having fun. You're just interacting and having fun with your child. At that point, now we started to get some balance and we've got stability in our trunk and we're gonna find that that child our little child wants to start moving up to a more upright position. And then we're gonna go into the sitting position. This is a really big position. And I say, don't allow them to go any higher up from sitting until we know that everything else has been developed. So we come up to this lovely sitting position and we wanna make sure that we have lots of pillows around or legs around so we have a very secure child who knows that if he absolutely falls, he will not hurt his head. Again, it's all about the head. The head is the part for balance, but the head is a very fragile. And in this position, besides we're gonna start challenging their balance, they're gonna learn how to protect themselves and get writing reactions. Writing reactions are the front, to the side and to the rear, so that at no time, if they absolutely fall, will they have to worry that they're gonna hurt their head. And if we're working on balance and rolling and rocking your child and all the other parallel um, fun things that we can do with our child, 
you will find that the child likes to have their balance challenged. So one of the things I love to do is put a bunch of pillows around and just start laughing and, and playing games, you know, up, we go to the right, up, we go to the left. And if the child's gonna cry, it's okay, give them a little cuddle and then do it again. And they will realize that it's okay for them to fall and you will see them do more and more. We're inviting, we're giving them an invitation to have a lot of fun and showing them that they're not gonna get hurt because they really are going to be afraid because their balance reactions have been so delayed. So once we come from sitting, we're gonna go into what's called creeping and crawling. So there's a difference between creeping and crawling. Creeping is when they finally move over and they get back onto their bellies and now they have all of the strength they need to get their head up and they start learning that they can move outside of their comfort zone on their bellies and they'll start creeping to get those toys. Again, what a great thing because they're developing muscles, they're developing a desire to explore their environment and they're having fun. And from there, what we want to encourage is crawling. Crawling is when they're on their hands and their knees and they start learning to move their environment. This is a really important stage because they're learning not only how to develop this trunk, but when a child starts to learn to crawl, they're using their pelvis in the same fashion that they would use to learn to walk. And a really important thing on this part is that, again, many of our kids have hip dysplasia, which is where the ball and socket of the hip joint are not developed correctly. If we have a child, when they come up to crawling and their legs are abducted, abducted is far apart, you move away from the body, one of the things you can do is create a small spandex or a skirt, sort of a skirt, which contains that abduction here and kind of keeps it in a little bit, which will allow the joint to develop uh, more properly. Again, with the hypotonicity, we are going to have to um, kind of change how we look at our children. And we wanna look at what's, what would be normal, and that normal is how our body develops. So sometimes we have to make special suits out of spandex or whatever so that our children can bring those legs in. So now that we have a child who is exploring their environment and crawling, this is such a fun, fun time. As parents, we want our child to start walking, but if this is the point, I tell parents, keep your child down, keep them down. Don't worry what other people say. This is the period that your child will develop their locomotion, their moving skills, they're manipulating, they're gonna start bringing the environment to themselves or they're gonna start exploring the environment. They're going to develop their self-help. How can I get that? What do I need to do to get that? Their vision is gonna increase. Their balance, their head, they're moving all around. They are going to become the, these little people that learn where they are the most comfortable and they're also gonna learn where they're the most uncomfortable and they're gonna start moving into that uncomfortable area. And that's when we really learn how to learn. From crawling, then it becomes the point where the child says, I am not staying down anymore. And they will start moving over to the big furniture. And we start here with what's called high kneeling. And this is a point where we can help our, our children and we can place little toys up for them to play with. Usually you don't even have to because they're so desirous of getting up and being like everyone else walking around. And we can place our hands on their pelvis here until they can get up into standing. I like to have big pieces of furniture, nothing small and mobile because again, our children are fearful of moving. But this is a great opportunity because as long as we have big furniture that they can lean on and we can hold them at their pelvis, they will start learning to move, they'll start weight shifting from side to side. It is at this point, this is a critical point in our children that we talk with our therapist or our orthopedic doctors. Because of hypotonicity, our children have loose ligaments. And this is the time we need to look at orthotics for their feet. Um, we'll have a couple of pictures that will show you what happens with our children. It's called pronation of their feet. And that is where their feet are down and they start coming inwards. And as our children are standing, they have a very wide base of support. 
their feet are turned in. Oftentimes we see their knees either turned in or they're turned really far out. And they've increased their base of support such that it, it will not function for them to get higher levels of skill. It's normal for all children to start out with a wide base of support, but we want to start working on the kids having a smaller base of support. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that when their foot hits the ground, it's hitting it in a correct fashion. Because once their foot hits the ground, everything up is going to make a difference. So if it's seated there correctly with a small AFO, which is called an ankle foot orthosis, you will see that the knee the ligaments in the knee will start to get corrected and then also in the pelvis. When we're talking AFOs, we want to talk the least invasive possible. Our children have several different types of tone. We have those children that have very high levels of low tone and those that are a little more normal. If your child has a high level of tone, you may need something that goes above the ankle. If you have that child that doesn't have the really high levels of tone, you may find you can just put a small insert into a shoe. You want to have just what the child needs because if you give them more than what they need, they will use it and they will not develop all the other muscles the way they should. So once we have a child in standing, then what we want to do with working with them is start having fun. We want to work on different surfaces. You want to walk with them on grass and on sand and upstairs and downstairs. We want to play games. We want to do catching where with a catching, when, in order to catch the ball, they have to focus on the ball so much that they have to get, forget that they're standing and they will learn to start using all those muscles. We want to continue working on balance and spinning. We want to continue them learning how to fall so that they get those protective reactions. Um, one of the things I love is that we can work on things like trampolines or air mattresses or fun things, balls, big balls. And the reason we do that is because as a child is moving up and down, their whole body starts to feel it and they start developing a complete muscle structure around their whole leg, around their whole body. So on a little trampoline, they're jumping up and down and they are learning to stabilize their body as they're mobilizing their world. As they're moving in the world, they're learning how to stay stabilized and structured so that they can become more normal. And then again, we can work on higher levels of activity. And at that point, our children are interacting in their environment and we're having fun. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or you need more information, um, you can contact Prada Willy Syndrome USA or the international organization. Um, I did write a book. There is a book out there which um, completely goes over all this information and a little bit more. Feel free to get in contact with me through the USA organization. Thank you.